Hey and welcome to this next video where we are ready to shift gears and talk about payments. Something that we've really <laughs> neglected up to this point in the course. Payments. How are you going to make money off of this app? Well, in this module of uh, classes or these, this chapter in our course, we are going to look at setting up subscriptions using Stripe. A quick word about in-app purchases versus something like Stripe. If you have, let's say for example, um, you know, over time collected up to 500 users per month who all subscribe at $20 each. Well, 500 times 20 is $10,000 per month. Now, if you process those payments using in-app purchases, then Apple will take a 30% cut of your payment. So you're looking at $7,000 take home and uh, that still needs to be taxed. So, wow. Uh, but if you use a payment processor like Stripe, like we're gonna set up in this course, then you will only lose like three-ish percent and you'll take home 9,700 out of $10,000 in that example. So um, that's kind of the direction we're headed. Uh, you're going to need one, a Stripe account, two, uh, a extra plugin to get going, and then um, we'll work through all of that here in this video series. So in this particular video, we're going to get started just by adding a button to show uh, a conditional that if the person is subscribed, then we'd like to uh, not show that button actually, if they're already subscribed. If they are not subscribed, then we're gonna show them that button and give them the option. And then in a subsequent video, we'll set up the, the payment flow in the process and we'll show how to you know, set up Stripe, set up your bank account tied to Stripe, set up subscriptions so that Stripe charges your customers and then that money gets pushed into your bank account. And um, what else? We're gonna set up how, to, how someone can manage their subs subscriptions, cancel them. And so let's start our very first part of this by adding the button that is conditional of if someone is subscribed, don't show it. But if they have not yet subscribed, then do. Oh yeah, last thing. Uh, also in this video series, we're gonna set up the conditional where people can view a, a certain amount of classes, but then after or only up to a certain point, then you know they're prompted to subscribe. So we'll build in some programming and logic and user interface flow there. So let's get started for this video with our uh, design work we're going to navigate into the profile page and then we are going to select all of these items and I'm just going to grab my cursor and I'm going to mouse these down oh that one's not moving <laughs> all right let's try that one more time 20, 40, 60. Okay, so that's what I want there. And then on our containers, I'm gonna grab a group and drop that in here. And I want this group to be 60 high with an X position of zero, drag it all the way across, something along the lines of, let's see, 310, that looks pretty good to me. And then under visual elements, we'll go ahead and grab a button and we'll drop that in here. And then let's go ahead and take this color and apply it to our button. Removing with the style so we can access that and adding that in. Okay, in the button text, we're gonna say get uh, full access with a 14 day trial. So that's what we'll do there. When the button is hovered, uh, there really isn't a hover state on mobile, so we'll just remove this. And let's go ahead and put that at 280 by 40. Uh, let's get this to our normal font of Leto. Letter spacing zero. Bold that. That's looking pretty good. Uh, let's give it a roundness of 10 for the button. Center it horizontally. Center it vertically. And then let's go ahead and just take a peek at how we're looking with the design so far. A 
looks pretty centered, the button. Okay, it looks like it could be moved up, let's say, five pixels. And then uh, we want to start adding our conditional work here. So we don't want this to be visible on page load, so uncheck that. Check collapse elements height when hidden because we don't want this hidden, or we don't want this showing uh, when we hide this button. We don't want just a space there. So with that checked, we'll, that'll remove that. We're going to call this group subscribe button 14 day trial. And we're going to now add the conditional in. And in order to add a conditional to this, we actually need some data to base the conditional. That data is going to be if the person has already subscribed. So head over to data, data types, user, and then let's say um, paid subscription, and then we'll do a yes or no. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and default that as a no. And now we can look for the current users, paid subscription. We'll add a case when it's yes, copy it, paste that in, and then a case when it is no. And the things that we want to change when those conditions change is uh, if it's visible or not. So if, they're, if they've already are a paid subscription person, we actually don't want it to show. If they have not paid yet, then we do want it to show. So they give them the option to do that. Okay, cool. So let's go check that out for our functioning. If we go to our app data and we are running this as this yoga test account. So if we look at our paid subscription, we can see that it shows up there. But if we were to subscribe and have a workflow set up, which we don't, that will disappear. Cool. Uh, it looks like it disappears and it actually, let's see, let's take this down to a height of 50. Yep, 50. Okay, so that just means that there's less of a block that gets moved out of the way giving 10 more pixels of space here. Yep, cool. Okay, so last thing we wanna do for this video is we will click Start and Edit Workflow. And then this is something we're actually gonna install. When we finally do this, we're gonna install a plugin that only works inside of apps. So it doesn't make sense for me to do it now, but I'll show the uh, thing that we are going to set up is we are going to click Open an External Website. And what I wanna show off is that we will be setting up a link here. Or actually, we don't have the page yet, so let's create the new page. The new page, we're gonna call it mobile app, let's see, uh, mobile payments. And we don't wanna clone it from anything. We'll just hit create. And then we'll preview that. There's really nothing there. We're just doing this to grab this URL. Okay, so now if we navigate back to our mobile app and this page, our profile, back to this button, what we want to set up here is a link, but there's something special we want to do. We want to just make up a parameter called UID, and then we want to insert the current user's unique ID into this. So we have a URL parameter here that we're passing so that when what's going to happen is that someone is logged into our app, but when they leave this, they actually leave our app to go pay because Apple doesn't allow you to process a payment from somewhere else inside of an app. You have to go somewhere else to do it unless you are selling a physical good. This rule is a particular thing for uh, app store digital goods. Uh, there was actually a ruling recently um, in the news about someone who won a court case against Apple that allows this. Otherwise, you used to be forced into taking the 30% hit and there was kind of a, a fight going on. I believe Spotify or uh, some other um, digital subscription providers uh, had this court case go here so that we can, you know, as a common user, make more money. I mean, common as in like not a large company just uh, someone who's going out there doing their own thing, making a great app. Okay, so uh, with that set up, then when someone clicks this, we'll give it a test. Let's make 
make sure this is no profile clicking here okay so we see we were taken to this page which we haven't done anything yet we'll do something in the next video but it contains this very important user identif identifier so we can access and know which user we're working with and make some changes uh, out on the payments page so join me in the next video we'll get stripe set up and then we'll start